Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, April 16, 2024. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? A lot of stuff going on the docket from an intraday perspective important close on the day they're at an important number they did some unfinished business we're going to look around the horn at a bunch of different charts we're also going to take a look at the bonanza that occurred in the live trading room today not only from an s p perspective we had a plethora i love that word plethora of stocks that we traded we had a trade in the bond market we were all over the place in the live room today again it was a bonanza something for everybody first thing we're going to look at is the number we've been focused on 50350 they bounced in front of it yesterday today they hit it and not only that we'll get to the intraday stuff in a moment but look where the closing print was now it says 50346 but here on the hourly chart you could see better the actual four o'clock close is 50349 let me ask are there any accidents or coincidences in the market? The short answer is, no, there aren't. Just to reiterate where this comes from, market runs up to this spot right there. Then it pulls back. It's only a one-day pullback, but wait, there's more. When a market gets rejected from a spot, that immediately tells us that the market thinks that spot's important. We don't need to know the reason why. We don't need to make up a reason why. It's important. You take it at face value. Market pulls back, and then here it gaps up, and it gaps up and over that place and takes off. Now, they've come back to retest what? The most recent bona fide breakout area in the sequence. That's why they're finding stability. That's why they're finding at least for a day or two support in that area. Doesn't mean it has to hold indefinitely, but what I always say and what held true already is at minimum minimum of an intraday basis it's support for a bounce type situation that worked yesterday and it worked again today hold on we'll get to that in a few moments now one more time just like last night if they start pushing down below 50350 you could see here that there's a bunch of no man's land white space all the way to the gap down here around for 97.21, I have a number slightly below that, 494.60, which happens to coincide with the weekly chart 20 period moving average. That is on the table. We don't know whether they will or will not bounce the tape this week, but it's on the table if, and it's an if, they're below 503.50. It begins with hourly closes from an intraday, and then a daily close below 503.50 opens the door down to that 20 period moving average on the weekly chart a la 494.60, 494.50, somewhere in that neck of the woods. Remember, it's regular way options expiration week where weird stuff happens. We're going to expect a two-way tape this week. We got a day down. We got a day which was a very narrow ranging day in today, and they really didn't get anywhere finished down on the day so technically that's two days down in a row what are we going to get tomorrow both directions and then maybe up for a day or day and a half into the end of the week don't be surprised if you see something of that magnitude remember and i haven't said this in a while it's worth noting get out your sticky pads it's the market's job to make as many traders and investors look like fools as much of the time as possible there were a lot of shorts in the market yesterday they're still there today. Eventually, they're going to have to get pies in the face and get whipped out. These are the short duration options, expiration today, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. All those folks need to get whipped around and whipped out. That's the way the market works. Here's an after hours quote. It's around 414, 415 Eastern Standard Time in the afternoon after the close, but there's a settlement between 4 o'clock and 4.15. So there's another close technically at 4.15. Look where they are right now. The bid is 503.52. The ask is 503.53.54. And that's basically where they are 
closing out the day. There are no accidents nor coincidences. One more time. Let me ask you this. Most of you listen to other people on YouTube and blogs and wherever else. How many zeroed in on 50350 a few weeks ago? Just curious, asking for a friend. What if they bounce the tape? Where are they going? Well, first real bona fide place from a daily chart perspective is between 510 and the trend line. Are they going to want to retest the trend line from underneath? Yeah, absolutely. Eventually, they're going to bounce. They're going to try and test or recapture the trend line. To our chart, they're building a bearish, flaggish type of situation. Below 503.50, she's bearish, opens the door for no man's land, stay above, and she can still rally and break the chain. How do they break the chain? Get above 506.50. Why is that? It's not an arbitrary number. You'll find that in a moment when we take a look at inside the numbers, the commentary. That number was in there. Funny how that works. Today's high. Now, you look at an hourly chart and you might say, hey, how is that a tradable situation down here, all this back and forth? How in the world can you trade that? Well, we're going to answer that question. Before we answer that question in pictures, let me see the posts under the video. Did anybody make money today in the live room? Whether it was a short, whether it was a long, whether it was the spiders, whether it was a stock, whether it was Tesla, doesn't matter. How about the bond market? Let me hear who made money today. Post your comments under the video. How's it going for you? in the live trading room inside the numbers. It was Turnaround Tuesday. They tried to turn around a couple of times, but not a bona fide all-day sucker as a turnaround. Regardless, remember, pause the video, read the notes in their entirety, go back to the chart, and double-check the work. You can see right here, 503.50. It's our early bear pivot. Below, she's bearish. Above, she's not. We have 505.10 on the board. That would constitute the beginning of a bull case for a further bounce to where? 50655, 50650. Remember that number? You already put it on a sticky note. Let's scroll up, see what else we have as the day starts to get underway. The bull case for a bounce is with price above 50510. 50510 is our bull pivot for now. How you doing? It's overhead resistance until it's not. They were summarily rejected at the pivot, the bull pivot, immediately at the open. They tried it again after 503.50. We'll get to that in a few moments, which becomes what? An exit opportunity. It became a target from the long trade. I'm giving it away early from 503.50. Doesn't appear as much on this five-minute chart, but guess what? It's 15 S&P handles. How you doing? Did we have traders short 505.10 in the live room? Yes, we did. Traders' choice. We have something for everybody. But I can tell you this. We had a whole bucket full of long riders from 503.50. You can see it right here. 938. 503.50 down to 501.67 is a bounce back zone. But there's a number in between. 945. There's your 503.50 on the button. 502.62 is the next place down should they go lower. 502.62. There it is. 502.62. We had traders at 503.50, ride it up to 505.10. Fantastic. We had traders short 505.10, ride it back down. Then we had long players at 502.62, ride it right back up. How you doing? This was ping pong with the S&P. It was one of those games where it almost feels like we're the ones that are thieves in the morning. And what I urge you to do is pause the video, read the rest, go back and double check the work, give it a little flavor right out of the shoot from a morning trade perspective. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. I gave you the paraphrase, I gave you the cliff notes. You get the detail in the commentary each and every day if you're trading in the S&P or would like to trade in the S&P, whether it's options on the SPY, options on the SPX, options on futures, futures themselves, micros, exchange-traded products, it doesn't matter. There is a vehicle for everybody. And if you're going to participate as a trader in the S&P, you must, and I repeat must and underline it, have the numbers. 
Three stocks on the move. Potentials today, two did not hit their entry objectives, but one did. Southern Copper, SCCO, hit its entry objective. Let's take a look at the chart. 109.35. How you doing? You never know which ones are going to give you the rocket ride. Came into the numbers, spiked it by a few pennies, turned around, ripped it back up in the other direction, and never stopped. But wait, there's more. We had a great story in Tesla today. One of the members emailed me before the opening bell who had a position in Tesla, wanted me to do the work in Tesla, where are the numbers, all that stuff. And I really wasn't focused on Tesla this morning, wasn't looking at it, but I said, of course, I'll do the work. And when I did the work, I saw where it was going. I saw what the possibility was. So as soon as the live room opened, we talked about a few things with the S&P and I brought up Tesla and I said, by the way, here are the numbers in Tesla, 154. We had a red line below, a don't be in the stock if below this number. Didn't get there, didn't even get close. They hit 154, turned it around, ran it back in the other direction. Nice trade. Plenty of participation in the live room in Tesla. We had a trade in JPM in the live room, 179.95 plus shipping and handling. Not tremendous, but they gave you the base hit and pretty much low of day. Funny how that works. We had a bond market trade today. Why was that? Well, bonds are in the news. Interest rates are in the news. You got the whole Fed thing. When are they going to lower interest rates? Now they're going to push it out. Interest rates are going up. Bond market's going down. Everybody's nervous. They're talking about it. It's top of mind. All that stuff. Fantastic. Creates an opportunity. What do we got? Well, here's a picture of the 10-year yield. It's on the rise. Scares everybody. Therefore, it has to be going higher. That's the prevailing wisdom. Where's it going? 4.8, 4.9, 5%. It's going to 20%. Whatever they want to say, the talking heads, doesn't matter. What's the number in TLT today? 87.85. What happened? They came into it. They spiked it. They bounced back in the other direction. Another low of day. How you doing? Apples? You like them apples? And there was a couple of more intraday trades in the live room, but I gave you the bulk of the thing. If you're one of those people that's wondering, hey, maybe I should try out the live room. Come over, try it out. You won't be disappointed. In addition to the trades that you see each and every day, there's a whole lot of learning going on in there. You'd be surprised how much you can learn in even one day. It's an investment in your trading future. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Well, they didn't quite get to 192.50 yet. Came close. Not the cigar yet, just yet. Weekly chart, 200 period moving average down there. What do we have tomorrow? Got an on-time type of situation. Remember what we had on a monthly chart with the spiders. We had an on-time month. Now we have an on-time day over here in the IWM. Call it Wednesday, Thursday. Remember what I was saying before. You're going to get two-way trading this week. You're going to get a market that goes both ways. Transports are weak, down 142 points today, 1%. Below an important number, close below a breakup candle low. Interesting. As you can see from a short-term intraday situation, they tried to bounce it at that place. They spiked it. They bounced it back. They tried to hold it, but they closed the day below it. That's a negative. That's your next bona fide place if they break below this low. This pivot low is the gateway to 15,020 15,000, 14,000, 950, 960, 970, somewhere in that neck of the woods slash neighborhood. What about the Q people? They were flat today. Anything going on there? Not really. They closed pretty much where they closed yesterday. So no deal, no dice, narrow ranging day, no new information. XLF still coming down. 39.45 is your next spot. Below that, 38.97. Put that on a sticky note. Below 39.45, opens the door for 38.97. That will tomorrow coincide even closer with this 100 period moving average. That's not the reason for the price, but the fact that the 100 is there makes the price that much more important. Maybe we've got a canary on our hands. The SMH or Smash Mouth, the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index proxy, was up today, $1.80, 0.83 of a percent. Interesting. Could be a canary for the tech space. And think about this. The Qs were flat today. SMH was up. Is this a real sell-off going to accelerate? 
Or is this almost over for this leg of a decline and they're going to bounce the tape for a while? We'll find out more tomorrow morning. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.